Nova Stella Novus Rex. In April 1066, a bright star with a long, streaked tail appeared in the night sky and burned for weeks. Its appearance coincided with the imminent invasion of England by William Normandy. To William's soldiers, waiting eagerly to set sail from Normandy, it seemed that the star's tail pointed directly at the Saxon king's castle in England. This was a divine guarantee of victory. It inspired a Norman's rallying cry, Nova Stella, Novus Rex, a new star, a new king. By the time the star had passed, the Saxon King Harold lay dead, killed at the Battle of Hastings, and William the Conqueror became King of England. That long-tailed star is depicted on the Bayou Tapestry, and we know it today as Halley's Comet. Domesday Book William won England by the sword and was merciless in replacing the Anglo-Saxon barons with more loyal Norman nobility. His harrying of the north killed thousands. But it was a land survey that truly cemented his rule. In 1085, William sent out surveyors across England to record the land holdings of everyone in his kingdom. So thorough was the survey, it was said to be as if God was recording the state of the world on Judgment Day. The resulting Domesday Book became the basis for land rulings for the next eight centuries. Although William's heirs would fall into conflict over the throne, the Domesday Book enshrined his people as the ruling class. The Taking of Cayenne in Henry I's quest to retake Normandy from his brother, he burned the city of Bayeux and beset the countryside with war. But it would be a backroom deal with the lords of Cayenne that would secure this great stronghold for England. Henry had such immense wealth that he was able to buy the loyalty of his brother's barons. One such defector captured the lords of Cayenne and brought them to Henry. Henry made a deal with his prisoners, gave the fortress of Cayenne without a fight, and in return for betraying their duke, received lands and riches from the English king. Remembering the fate of Bayouk, Bayouk, none refused. Cayenne became an important stepping stone in Henry's conquest of Normandy. Louis VI of France Louis VI was a beloved king of France. Bright and valiant from a young age, he possessed fierce sense of duty to protect the kingdom duty to the kingdom. But his reign was marred by regular assaults from his own barons. Time and again they attacked his lands, and each time Louis defeated them, earning him the moniker of Louis the Fighter. After years of thwarted resistance, the nobles accept Louis as king and united under him against the Eng English invaders. In his later years, Louis indulged in the pleasures of food and wine, and despite his reputation as a warrior king, he became known by another nickname, Louis the Fat. He is still remembered fondly as a king who defended the poor and the pious, and who, against the odds, united a country in turmoil. The Empress's Flight In the deep winter of 1142, the Empress Matilda, facing capture by her rival, King Stephen, was forced to make a daring flight from the Tower of Oxford Castle. Under cover of night, she descended the tower's walls by rope, aided by a few loyal soldiers. Finding the gaps in Stephen's dwindling siege forces, the group fled unseen, with Matilda wearing white for cover against the snow. Crossing the frozen river Thames, Matilda then trudged miles through heavy snow before finding refuge at her stronghold of Wallingford. Shortly after her escape, she slipped away to her court at Rowan where she was free to plan the next phase of her challenge for England's throne. The Angevin Empire When King Stephen died, Matilda's son Henry ascended the throne of England. He became the first king to rule over what is now known as the Angevin Empire. Henry was an active and ambitious ruler, determined to expand and protect the heart of his empire. He personally traveled the extents of his lands, making deals, crushing rebellions and annexing new territory. Henry acted so swiftly and with such audacity that the King of France described him as 
seeming rather to fly than to go by horse or ship. But just as Henry's ancestor had struggled to maintain their power, so the Angevin kings would rule only two more generations before the empire fractured, once again leading England to war. Rising high above Dover's white cliffs stands one of England's largest castles. First built by William the Conqueror to prevent another invasion, it defended England for centuries. Every part of its construction, from its soaring watchtowers, its overhanging firing platforms, its reinforced keep, deep ditches and concentric walls, was designed to impress, impose, and stand strong. But in 1216, Dover held back the French siege due to more than just its construction. The castle's commander, Hubert de Burr, inspired a die-hard English resistance in the face of a full French invasion. His men defended their fortress and their king with unwavering determination. De Burgh described the castle as the key to England, and thanks to its design and tenacity of its garrison, it remained firmly locked. Nicola, Sheriff of Lincolnshire In the upheaval of civil war, Lincoln Castle became a clear critical fortification in the fight for England's crown. At the forefront of his defense was an unlikely figure, an aging woman. Lady Nicola de la Haye lived in a time when husbands were gatekeepers of their wise power, yet through grit and loyalty, Nicola became an admired, and even feared, custodian of Lincoln. She personally planned and directed the defense of the castle through two sieges and regular attacks, staunchly holding her position against the odds. King John and his heir, Henry III, owed their crowns to Nicola, they spoke of her fondly as our beloved and faithful Nicola de la Haye. 